Мир? Peace? Мир це утопія. Peace is a utopia. Мир це утопія, тому що Even if there's no war raging where you are, that doesn't mean there's peace. Є мир. Безпека? Security. Я втекла від війни. Yesterday I escaped from the war. Сьогодні я Today I'm safe. But I don't believe it'll be safe here tomorrow. War. War takes life. It kills people. But the war has also taken away the life that millions of Ukrainians had before the war. I'm Tanya, and I'm 31 years old. I'm Ukrainian. I don't call myself a refugee. I don't like that word. I live in Kiev, in the district of Solomyanka, near a park. My husband and I built an apartment there two years ago. It's become home for me. Ever since I moved from Donetsk, I felt like I had no home. My husband's name is Dima. We've been together for eight years. I love him very much. I work on education projects with young people. And I make films about important social projects. I love parties. We often host parties and have lots of visitors. I even have a disco ball. I really love our balcony. I wanted to make it beautiful with lots of flowers, a place where I could relax after work. This sense that you have when life is peaceful, where you think about what you'd like to eat or how great the weather is, all that was wiped out in a single day. I've decided to conduct a special military operation. Whoever tries to stand in our way or create threats for our country should know that Russia's response will be immediate and will lead to such consequences that you have never encountered in your history. This is not designed to harm the interests of Ukraine or its people. My husband told me I needed to get up. He said missiles had struck near Brisbane airport. I was confused. I couldn't believe it. I thought, is this a bad joke? I asked my husband if it was really true. Did Putin really do it? My husband told me it was real and not fake. He said we needed to get ready and to get to the air raid shelter. I couldn't eat anymore or take a shower for fear that I might miss the sirens and not get to safety in time. 
We had to go to the air raid shelter two or three times a day. The more we had to go there, the more I became convinced that I would have to leave my country. I talked to my husband and together we decided that I shouldn't stay, that I needed to get to safety. Now I'm in Germany. My grandmother is called Tanya too. My grandfather wanted to name me after her. She's 87 years old now. She's incredible and even has fans on Instagram. Grandma, you look so beautiful today. Happy New Year! I always look beautiful, or I did. How do you like my outfit? It looks great. Is it made of silk? Yes, it's silk. You look beautiful. You look beautiful. Yes, it's for New Year. And then Christmas. As a young child, she survived the Second World War. In 2014, she had to flee the war in the east of Ukraine. Now she's in Kiev, and once again, war is raging around her. I think three wars are too much for one life. I want her to come here so that I can take care of her. I don't want anything to happen to her, because she can't cope alone. She needs help to get to an air raid shelter, and there aren't many shelters in Kiev. My parents are now living with her in Kyiv. So my mom, my dad and my grandma are all living in a one-room apartment. My grandma can't walk right now. She broke her leg just before the war started. So she's lying in bed. And they don't want to leave Kyiv. Hi, Demulia. Hello, darling. How are you? Okay, and you? Okay. Did you have to go to the shelter today? Mm, yes, once. And then again later. Mm. What do you think about my parents? How can we get them out? Did you find anything out today? Yes. I found out about a rescue vehicle. How many days would they be on the road? Because it's a rescue service, they drive without stopping. The connection is very bad, I can't hear you properly. But I understood that they don't stop anywhere? The trip's less than 24 hours. Did you tell my mom? Yes, I called her. She's worried about your grandma's condition and isn't even sure if she wants to leave herself. She says she still needs to think about it. She's worried that something could happen to grandma on the way. And what would she do then? Okay, I'll call her tomorrow and I'll talk to grandma too. Thank you. It's good to hear your voice. It's good to hear you too. Bye. Love you. Love you too. When Dima drove me to the border so that I could leave the country, I was worried that something might happen to him on the way back. 
без мене, ніби я. When I wasn't there to help. Можу, якщо щось трапиться. I was so worried. I told him I was sorry for every time we'd ever argued. If I'd stayed with him, he wouldn't have been looking out for himself or working to help our country, but taking care of me. If I'd stayed in Ukraine, I wouldn't have been much help to him. We love each other and do want to be together, but... I'm glad that we women had the option of deciding what role we want to play in this war. When I see ordinary, unarmed people standing up against tanks, I wonder whether I'm really a patriot. I fled here to Germany, and I'm not bold enough to do something like that to defend Kiev. A short while ago, I was in an air raid shelter with bombs exploding. Now I'm in Germany, in a place surrounded by forests and lakes. But I actually feel very angry, like I hate the whole world that I don't want to be here, that I want to go home. I just want everything to stop, all this horror. Everyone here feels the same way. I'm the group leader here and answer everyone's questions. We make sure everyone has food to eat and clothes to wear, we go grocery shopping and cook and try to structure the day for everyone. I arrived here yesterday. My children have been here from the start. They came with the group. I drove from Lviv in the hope that I could collect them and bring them home because Lviv is the safest city in Ukraine. I was very optimistic until this morning when I saw the news about the attack on the Yaraviv military base. It's just 40 kilometers from Lviv and 20 kilometers from the Polish border. Now I'm not so optimistic. I stayed in Lviv up until now and carried on working. I just took holiday to come and pick up my children. You thought Ukraine would win the war by the end of your holiday? Yes. I only ever talk to the group here in Ukrainian. Russian is my first language. Even my grandparents spoke Russian. Our entire family comes from the Luhansk and Donetsk region. Before the war started on February 24th, I never had the feeling that I was doing anything bad by speaking Russian. But now my mother tongue is the language of the enemy. I'm sad that I have something in common with Russia. Because Russia just invaded Ukraine, claiming that we're not independent.
This is what I packed on the first day, on February 24th, when we decided to leave. We didn't know where we were going or for how long. I was panicked, and I knew it. These are my degrees, a bachelor in law from Donetsk and a master's in law from Kiev, birth certificate, passport, marriage certificate. For some reason I took two lots of hand cream, Ukrainian chocolates and canned food. Here are my warm clothes, a sweatshirt and two pairs of pants, two t-shirts of mine and two that I borrowed from my husband for as long as we're not together, while he's in Ukraine and I'm here. Then, at the last minute, I thought, maybe it's also okay to take a cardigan. It's from Ksenia Schneider, a Ukrainian designer. I really like her things. This is the only clothing that I have here that makes me feel better. Somehow, I just feel better when I wear it. I've always liked wearing cool things. I remembered my mother grabbing photos when she left Donetsk. That's why I took the pictures that I don't have in digital form. This is my grandma when she was young. The war didn't start for me on February 24th. The war in Ukraine started in 2014. My parents were forced to move to Kiev in 2014 when Russian forces marched into the Donetsk and Luhansk regions. Back then they were just as confused as everyone is today. They also thought the war would be over tomorrow and they would be able to return home. I think that's one of the reasons why it's so difficult for them to leave. My father is 66. He just can't believe that he's losing his home for a second time. That once again he has to flee without knowing where he's going. Hello. Hello mom. Hi, Mom. How are you? Okay. Did you decide? What? I'm considering the pros and cons. What pros and cons? The only advantage is that we'd be in safety and together with you. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the cons? The risks on the road. Mm -hmm. Grandma's health during the trip. Mm -hmm. I don't want to leave your father. If we leave, we have to start all over again. Not necessarily. It's just for a little while and we can come back someday. Tanyush, I wonder if we should leave at all. You're young and full of energy. I'm not. I've already considered all the options. What options? It's difficult. 
I don't want to talk about it. It's risky trying to protect grandma both here and on the road. But that's life. At some stage, we have to say goodbye to our parents. That's how it is. You're putting you, grandma and grandpa in the grave just because you're not young. We've got a good option for transporting grandma. She'll be lying down. You will have support. And this won't go on forever. You don't have to start a new life here. We'll go back for sure. Okay. Mom, I need you to decide. Maybe today I started to see her point of view. I can't influence her decision. I feel like I have to stop trying to convince her. I'm safe here. And it's important for me to fight Russia from here. So I've decided to come to Berlin to take part in a big protest rally for Ukraine. The theatre in Mariupol was destroyed, and people were using it as a bomb shelter. A week before the war, we went past that theatre, and there was a line of people waiting to go in. I was really impressed that people were so interested in art that they were willing to wait in the cold to get in. And when I saw now that it was just destroyed, and with people inside, I held up a sign in 2014 with the words, no war. At the time, I was really worried about my hometown. I wanted to convince people in Kiev and the rest of Ukraine to join together and prevent the war in Donetsk. In 2022, a week before Russia attacked Kiev, I also protested with a sign. To defend peace in Europe, we must stop Putin and his war in Ukraine. At the demo today, my sign just says, I want my life back, because we've all lost our lives. Hi, Grandma. Hello, my dear. Look, I'm wearing a Ukrainian flag. I'm in Berlin. I miss you. Why are you in Berlin? I'm here for a protest. I'm going to speak at a rally. Well done, you're an activist. I got that from you, Grandma. You're wonderful. I listen to the radio, watch TV. What's on the radio? Mm -hmm. They're only talking about the war on the radio. 
It's just war, fighting and more war. Today there were songs, new songs about the war. They're singing a little. Don't worry, Grandma, OK? I'm staying in bed. The trip is too dangerous, so we'll hide out here. I've already lived through a war once by hiding. I can survive another one in the same way. OK, Grandma. I have to go to the protest. Look at my flag, Grandma. Tell them you represent Donetsk, Ukrainian Donetsk. Hugs, Grandma. My name is Tanya and I'm proud to be Ukrainian. I lost my home in 2014 in Donetsk because Putin and his army occupied my hometown. I lost my home for the second time this month in Kyiv because the Russian army attacked whole Ukraine. You all know that this war is not about Ukraine, right? You all know that this war is against whole Europe. I'm asking you to make pressure on your parliament. Do not use Russian gas, please. We all want home and I really want my life back. How long will this war last? These are years of my life. I'm 31 now, and I feel like for the next 10 or 20 years, I'll either be running away from this war, or I'll be fighting it. And my life will just pass by this way. Субтитры 